Hi Year One and we hope you've had a lovely Easter break and I can't wait to start our new theme of incredible creatures. Such an exciting theme. I am ready to start our new literacy focus as well which is The Jungle Book and I can't wait to read it to you. Long ago, deep in the jungles of India, there lived a wise and kind black panther named Bagheera. One day, as Bagheera walked along the river, he saw something surprising. A baby! The baby was lying in a boat that had crashed onto the shore. Why, it's a man cub! The panther said to himself. The man cub was in urgent need of food and care but the closest man village was days away so Bagheera took the baby to a nearby wolf family the mother had just had pups and Bagheera hoped she would accept the man cub as one of her own the panther placed the baby near the den and stepped away after a few quick sniffs the mother wolf, wolf gently carried the baby into her den Bagheera's plan had worked For the next 10 years, Mowgli, as the man cub came to be called, lived happily with the wolves. He quickly became the favourite among all the jungle animals, and all that is except Shere Khan, a strong and cunning tiger. Shere Khan feared nothing but man's gun and man's fire. He had heard of the young man cub and believed that Mowgli would grow up to be a hunter. The tiger wanted to make sure that didn't happen. One night, the wolf elders met at Council Rock to discuss the matter. Akila, the wolf leader, declared that for everyone's safety, Mowgli would have to leave the pack. But the boy cannot survive alone in the jungle, protested Mowgli's father, Rama. Bagheera, who had returned often during the years to check on Mowgli, had been listening to the wolves. He jumped down from his perch in the tree and approached Akila and Rama. Maybe I can help, he said. I know a man village where Mowgli would be safe. So be it, said Akila. There's no time to lose. Good luck. Early the next morning, Bagheera and Mowgli set out. They travelled fast and were soon deep in the jungle. The two travelled well into the night. Bagheera, said Mowgli, I'm getting sleepy. Shouldn't we start back home? Bagheera told Mowgli about the Shere Khan and the Wolf Council's decision. Mowgli was shocked. I don't want to go back to the man village, he protested. Bagheera promised Mowgli that things would seem better in the morning. He helped the man cub climb a tall tree. We'll be safer up here, said the panther. They settled down on the tree branch and in no time at all, Bagheera was sound asleep while Mowgli brooded over his fate. Neither one noticed the car, the snake, slither towards Mowgli. Say now, what have we here? said Car. It's a man cub, a delicious man cub. Mowgli tried to shove Car out of his face. Oh, go away and leave me alone, he said, annoyed. Car refused to leave. He kept slithering towards Mowgli, and when Mowgli finally looked straight at Car, the snake used his eyes to put Mowgli into a trance. Car coiled himself round Mowgli and was preparing to eat him. Suddenly, Bagheera woke up and saw what was happening. Moving quickly, the panther slapped Car on the head and the snake released Mowgli from his grip. An angry Car turned on Bagheera. However, before the snake could coil himself around Bagheera, Mowgli pushed him off the tree branch and defeated and, hu and hungry Car slithered off into the jungle. The next morning, Mowgli and Bagheera were awakened by a loud rumbling and shaking. A parade, 
Mowgli shouted enthusiastically. Bagheera covered his ears and groaned. Oh no, the Dawn Patrol again. Mowgli grabbed a vine and swung down from the tree to take a look. Mowgli watched as a long line of elephants marched proudly along in a single file. He hurried over to a baby elephant at the very end of the line. Can I join in? asked Mowgli. Sure, said the baby elephant. Just do what I do. Mowgli got in step behind the baby elephant and began to march along. Then he got down on all fours to walk more like the elephants in front of him. Suddenly, Colonel Haffy, at the head of the line, called out, To the rear, march! Mowgli did not know what that meant. The entire company had to turn around. Bonk! He and the baby elephant bumped into each other. Company, halt! Colonel Haffy shouted and all the elephants stopped and stood ready for the inspection. Mowgli tried to fit in, but Colonel Hathi figured out that Mowgli was a man-cub. The Colonel lifted Mowgli high with his trunk. I'll have no man-cub in my jungle, he cried. This is not your jungle. An offended Mowgli replied. At that moment, Bagheera rushed over. The, the man cub is with me, he told Colonel Hathi. I'm taking him to the man village. To stay, demanded Colonel Hathi. You have my word, said Bagheera. Good, said the elephant. And remember, an elephant never forgets. With that, Colonel Hathi turned and marched off with his troop. You're going to the man village right now, said Bagheera. I'm staying right here, Mowgli cried. He wrapped his arms around a small tree. You're going if I have to drag you, shouted Bagheera. And he tried, unsuccessfully, to pull Mowgli off the tree. Bagheera lost his temper. From now on, you're on your own, he declared and stalked off. Don't worry about me, an equally angry Mowgli yelled after him. Mowgli wandered through the jungle and finally came to rest against a large rock. He heard rustling and leaves and suddenly a singing and dancing bear named Baloo appeared. Mowgli was upset after his fight with Bagheera, but once Baloo arrived, it was hard to stay in a bad mood. Baloo offered to teach Mowgli about the bare necessities of life in the jungle. He showed Mowgli how to find bananas, coconuts and other foods. Baloo showed him to scratch his back on a tree too. The whole time Baloo sang and danced, Mowgli couldn't help but smile and feel better. The two new friends splashed and played in the river and then floated contentedly downstream together. Mowgli joined in as Baloo sang some more. I like being a bear, said Mowgli. You're going to make one swell bear, said Baloo. Why, you even sing like one. Suddenly, a group of monkeys swooped down from the trees and grabbed Mowgli. Hey, screamed Mowgli, let go of me. He struggled against the monkeys who just chittered and laughed and held on to him. Baloo angrily shook his fist at the monkeys and demanded that they release Mowgli. Come on and get him, taunted one of the monkeys. The monkeys aimed a steady chorus of jeers and insults at Baloo. They aimed plenty of fruit at him too. The monkeys swung through the trees, tossing Mowgli along as they went. Baloo! cried Mowgli. Help me! They're carrying me away! Baloo knew he needed Bagheera to help him. He called for the panther as loud as he could. As soon as Bagheera heard Baloo's cries, he hurried towards the bear. Baloo told Bagheera that the monkeys had carried Mowgli off. Bagheera figured that the monkeys were talking, taking Mowgli to the ruins of the ancient city where their ruler, an orangutan named King Louie, lived. Bagheera and Baloo set off at once to save Mowgli. While King Louie and the monkeys danced and sang, the king told Mowgli that he dreamed of being a human. He had heard that Mowgli wanted to stay in the jungle and he offered to help the man-cub. In return, the king wanted Mowgli to tell him the secret of how people made fire. But I don't know how to make fire, Mowgli said. 
King Louis did not believe him. Bagheera and Baloo arrived at the ruins in no time to hear what King Louis wanted. Bagheera quickly came up with a plan. While you create a disturbance, he said to Baloo, I'll rescue Mowgli. Baloo disguised himself as an ape and burst into the join the dancing. King Louis took one look at the newcomer and began to dance with him. Bagheera tried to grab Mowgli, but each time, right before he could, one of the monkeys whirl, would whirl the boy away from him. By the time Baloo and Bagheera were finally able to get Mowgli away from the king, Lu from the King Louis and the monkeys, the ancient ruins had crumbled entirely around the king and his monkey court. That night, while Mowgli slept, Bagheera explained to Baloo that Shere Khan was after the man cub. He convinced Baloo that Mowgli was not safe in the jungle. The next morning, Baloo reluctantly told Mowgli, I've got to take you to the man village. Hurt and disappointed, Mowgli ran off, only to run into Kaa. Shere Khan heard that Mowgli had run off and prowled through the jungle, looking for the man cub. When he heard Ka singing to someone up in a tree, he called the snake down to ask him, who was in his coils. Ka did not want to share the man cub, so he told Shere Khan he was singing to himself. While Shere Khan and Ka were talking, Mowgli managed to escape from the snake's coils. He ran off into the jungle once more, feeling more alone than ever before. Mowgli arrived at a place in the jungle where there were very little grass on the ground and no leaves on the trees. He was soon joined by four vultures. At first, the vultures tried to tease Mowgli. He's got legs like a stork, one vulture said. But he doesn't have any feathers, said another. And all the vultures laughed until they saw how sad Mowgli was. The vultures tried to cheer Mowgli up and they told him they'd like to make him an honouring vulture. When Mowgli said he'd rather be on his own, they wouldn't take no for an answer. They insisted on singing a friendship song to him. Mowgli began to smile and soon he was clapping along with the birds continued to sing. Shere Khan overheard the singing and went over to Mowgli and the vultures. Bravo, bravo, he said to the vultures when they finished their song. And thank you for detaining my victim. The vultures were frightened and flew off. From the safety of a tree, they urged Mowgli to run. But Mowgli turned to Shere Khan and said, You don't scare me! Mowgli refused to run from the tiger. Shere Khan counted to ten and then leaped at Mowgli, roaring with all his claws out and his mouth wide open. Baloo arrived in the nick of time and pulled Shere Khan's tail so hard the tiger fell short of the mankle. The vultures, Mowgli and Baloo all fought against Shere Khan. The tiger ran off when a lightning song caused a tree to burst into flames and Mowgli tried a burning branch to his tail. Baloo lay injured and still on the ground. Finally, he opened his eyes and lifted his head. Overjoyed, Mowgli ran and sprang into his friend's arm. Baloo, Bagheera and Mowgli set off into the jungle once again and at long last they reached the man village. Mowgli climbed a tree to get to a good look at the girl he had heard singing down by a watering hole. He couldn't take his eyes off her, to Bagheera's great delight. When the girl saw Mowgli, she smiled shyly at him. The girl dropped her jug and it rolled down where Mowgli stood. He picked up the jug and followed the girl to the man village. He turned around to give Baloo and Bagheera a big goofy grin. Mowgli is where he belongs now, said Bo Bagheera. I think you're right, said Baloo. And he said, and he and Bagheera danced happily back into the jungle. I hope you enjoyed our new story.